Welcome back to the One Chart at a Time video series. We are now entering our fourth section of the series. We're now going to start talking about visualizations that are used to plot geospatial data, maps. And there's a lot of considerations when it comes to plotting geographic data, as we're going to see over the next few days when it comes to creating maps. And to kick us off, we're going to talk about the Choropleth map, which is the standard map type you've probably seen when we're plotting data on a map, but it does have that weird name. And to help us understand more about the Choropleth map and things to consider, we have Casey Miller from the Los Angeles Times to help us better understand the Choropleth map. Hey John, thanks for having me. Today I'm going to talk about Choropleth maps. These kinds of maps are used to show values over a geographical area. You've probably recently seen a lot of these because it's an election year. They're very frequently used to display election results, uh, especially by state and county level. They, of course, can be used for other things too, though, as long as you use them correctly. Uh, one of the most common pitfalls when making Choropleth maps is accidentally making a population density map. This could be the number of people under the age of 18 around the United States or U.S. employment density. Inherently, both of these things are going to be higher in urban areas than they are in rural areas. That's something you should really keep in mind because you're not, therefore, then displaying that actual data itself, you're just showing that there are a lot of people there. Uh, that's something that is not really helpful when doing a map and often the case for not making the map, to be honest. Something that is hugely important when making Corpoth maps is using the right color scheme. So there are a couple different color schemes. There's sequential, whether it be like a scale, for instance, the percentage of people in areas that are Pittsburgh Steelers fans, it's gonna be higher probably in Pennsylvania than it will be in North Carolina. Uh, categorical and or qualitative, which is, for instance, say, which presidential candidate won the primary in different counties in California. And diverging, which I made a map like this this year um, for Southern California, which was, you know, Trump versus Biden. So on a scale of, you know, who voted the most for Trump being like the darkest red to scale toward the middle, maybe being white, and then to the farthest by Biden being dark blue. So most of those are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, scale being often shading from like zero to 100. Categorical being a variety of different colors, often um, very different from each other. And then diverging being two. Um, so one thing on one far side of the spectrum and the other thing on the other side of the spectrum. One of the things that I uh, wanted to show when talking about colors is this really great tool called uh, Color Brewer. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. So this tool is really great for generating color schemes. We'll often want to do our own custom color schemes, but this is a really great way to start at least. Uh, it lets you shows, <clears throat> shows you sequ sequential, diverging, and qualitative. And you can kind of mouse over and see what different ones look like. It lets you pick the number of data classes. So um, it gives you a whole bunch of these. And then also allows you to select for uh, showing only colorblind safe palettes, which is really handy. So now that we've gone over the different kinds of color schemes, I also wanted to show you one of my favorite Choropleth maps I've seen over the past few years. Um, it happens to be a map by 538 showing how widespread is your college football fan base? As a UNC fan, I am more uh, closely aligned with basketball, but this was really fun. And I think that, you know, most colleges, football and basketball fan groups are about the same. Uh, however, this is showing ticket sales. So it's a little bit different than just like I support. Uh, however, this was really fun. So uh, I have UNC Bruins, or sorry, UCLA Bruins on here right now. And you can see that uh, the fanship is mostly in California. However, there are some fans in Maine as well and Minnesota. I'm going to put in UNC next. No, Tar Heels, we'll go with that. <laughs> uh, you can see that it's mostly North Carolina, as you would expect, and a little bit of Virginia. I also, of course, have to look up our rival. So this is really, I really enjoyed this map. Uh, it's very big, which is nice. And you can see that they are using a sequential color scale here. So it's starting as white and getting to dark purple. It's 
And one way to do this would be just to have a continual shading. They've done some binning here. So zero to 25, 25 to 50, all being the same color. I think that probably helps uh, these counties to pop a little bit more. So that's something you should also think about when making maps like this. Uh, this is just a fun example though, to show that they don't have to just be about politics. You can use them to show any kind of data. And this happened to be a really fun one that I liked. So that's my little spiel about Coral Cliff Maps. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you want to make one sometime. Thanks for having me, John. Have a good day. And thanks, Casey, for that great review of the Coral Cliff Map. It's a great way to start thinking about how to use color in our visualizations and a great kickoff to this section. So come back tomorrow. We're going to talk about different maps and different ways to plot geographic data.